In this lecture, we're going to talk about the latitude and longitude coordinate reference system as it relates to FAA sectional charts. Now, a lot of you may have some experience with this topic already, which is good. The FAA test is known for asking you to find locations on a sectional chart that correspond to coordinate locations. And if you know how to do this, they're easy points to pick up on the test. So to get us started, let's step back for a bit and talk about coordinate systems in general for a minute. Now suppose you had this brand new planet you just discovered. We'll call this Racquetball World. How are you going to locate specific places on Racquetball World or tell two locations apart? Well, you're going to need some sort of reference system. One approach is that we could put a grid over Racquetball World and use grid coordinates to locate objects, kind of like we learned to do graphs in math class. The trick, though, is that a regular grid just doesn't fit well onto the sphere of our planet. It'll either poke up at the edges or we'll have to stretch it to get it to fit, and neither of those are very good features for our grid. A simple and pretty elegant solution is to use angles instead of linear units to locate things on our planet. If we start at the center of racquetball world, we can then define the angle up or down looking at the sphere from the side, and we call this latitude. And then we can define the angle clockwise or counterclockwise looking from the top, and we'll call this longitude. And the combination of a latitude and a longitude angle gives us a unique coordinate for any place on Racquetball World. Now it's not a perfect system, but it's pretty simple and it works really well in most places, and it happens to work really well on Earth. So let's look at it on planet Earth. Now for an angular coordinate system to work, you need a, a set starting point for both latitude and lo longitude. Latitude's pretty easy because we just pick the middle point between the two poles, which is the equator. The equator has a latitude of zero degrees. If you go up from the equator, the latitude values increase until you get to positive 90 degrees. Or you can say it's north latitude because it's in the northern hemisphere. If you go down from the equator, latitude values get smaller until you reach minus 90 degrees at the south pole. And that would be south latitude because it's in the southern hemisphere. For longitude, though, where do you set the starting point? Well, not surprisingly, that was a really messy political sausage making process that involved a bunch of crazy geographers. A line of longitude is called a meridian, and it's what we call a great circle because it goes all the way around the Earth at its widest point in that direction. The longitude starting point for Earth's geographic coordinate system is called the prime meridian, and it runs through Greenwich, England. Longitude values increase east of the prime meridian until you reach 180 degrees east longitude, and they decrease west of the prime meridian until you get to minus 180 degrees, or you can just drop the negative and say it's 180 degrees west longitude. So here in the United States, our longitude values are negative, or they will have a W after them because we're in the western hemisphere. We have a system for locating things on the planet using angles expressed as degrees. That's cool, but a degree is pretty big. One degree of latitude is about 69 miles. So we either need to work with fractions of degrees to be useful, or we need some smaller units. The smaller units that we typically use are minutes and seconds. A degree is divided into 60 minutes, and a minute is divided into 60 seconds. A minute latitude is about uh, 1.15 miles, and a second of latitude is about 100 feet. So that's pretty precise we can get down to about 100 foot accuracy using a combination of degrees, minutes, and seconds. So check out this map and we'll look at the coordinate for the Kibbe Dome on the University of Idaho campus. Its latitude and longitude coordinate is 46 degrees, 43 minutes, 34 seconds north by 117 degrees, 1 minute, 4 seconds west. Let's look at this on some sectional charts and see how the coordinates work on these FAA maps. Take a look at this example. Notice the grid lines that mark the degrees latitude and longitude. Each of the tick marks is one minute. The bigger tick marks are 10 minutes, and then there's a full grid line again at 30 minutes between the marked degree lines. Latitude values will increase as you go north or up on the map, and longitude values will increase as you go to the west or left on the map because we're in the Western Hemisphere here. 
So if you had a question on the FAA test that asked you what airport was at 47 degrees 19 minutes north latitude and 116 degrees 33 minutes west longitude, you'd count the tick marks up from the 47 degree line till you got to 19 minutes, and then you'd count over from the 116 degree 30 minute line to find that it's the St. Mary's Airport. Okay, so here's an actual question from the FAA practice test. What airport is located approximately 47 degrees, 40 minutes north latitude, and 101 degrees, 26 minutes west longitude? I'll give you a minute to look at this, and then we'll give you the answer. Okay, did you get the Garrison Airport? That's the correct answer. And you'll find that by counting over from the 101 degree line, 26 minutes, or you can count backwards from the 101 degree, 30 minute line. And then you can count either backwards from the 48 degree line down or count up from the 47 degree, 30 minute line. The alternative to using degrees, minutes, and seconds is to use fractions of degrees, or what we sometimes call decimal degrees. Let's go back to the Kibbe Dome. The decimal degree coordinate for the Kibbe Dome is 46.726242 degrees north and 117.017703 degrees west longitude. Okay, so how do we convert that to decimal degrees? It's pretty easy, really. You just take the fraction part of each uh, degree and multiply it by 60 and that gives you your minutes. So for example, the decimal part of the latitude is 0.726242. Multiply that by 60 and you get 43.6 minutes. For the longitude part, you take the 0 0.017703, multiply that by 60 and you get 1.1 minutes. So why do you need to know this? Well, it's because the FAA likes to ask you tricky questions like this one. So you've been hired to inspect the tower under construction at 46.9 degrees north and 98.6 degrees west near Jamestown Regional. What must you receive prior to flying your unmanned aircraft in this area? Okay, so first of all, you got to figure out where they're talking about, and then we need to know what airspace we're in when we get there. So to do that, you're going to have to calculate or convert these decimal degrees to degrees and minutes because that's what's on the, the chart. So why don't you take a minute and do this and then we'll look at the answer together. Did you get 46 degrees 54 minutes north by 98 degrees 36 minutes west? That should be about here on the map. And because we're in restricted airspace, then we would need B authorization from air traffic control in order to fly there. Okay, that's it for latitude and longitude and how we find coordinates on the sectional charts. It's pretty easy and hopefully it'll net you a couple of easy points on your test.